This is the story of Joanna Stingray, a girl from California who found herself in 1980s Russia on the radar of the KGB and FBI for smuggling out underground Soviet music that Americans were never supposed to hear. Yeah, this music. This is Russian underground rock that the Kremlin never wanted to be written or performed. And they definitely didn't want anyone in the West to be listening to it. Rock music was a political tool in the Soviet Union, always. An import from the West and a threat to the system. So, how did underground music go mainstream in a country without freedom of expression? It's not like you could go pick up the guitar and compose music and start singing on the streets or in clubs there. So I realized that I had this ability to show the world something they hadn't seen. You know, we were brought up being so afraid of, of the evil empire and Russia. Joanna Stingray spent most of the 80s in Leningrad with underground rock royalty, camera in hand. She filmed their music videos, their concerts, and even their drunken nights out. She also fell in love. That's Yuri. More on him later. We're taking a deep dive into her video diaries from Russia as Joanna pulled open the Iron Curtain with an album called Red Wave. Red Wave certainly was one of the first glimpses of Russian music around the world. Certainly for the States. We, we knew probably nothing about there even being rock bands that existed over there. That's Joanna in 1983. She was an LA musician who wasn't really getting anywhere in the States. So she hopped a plane for Russia looking for some adventure. Her understanding of the Soviet Union was, well, not that much different from most Americans. She thought it was cold, gray, and miserable. And I remember thinking, oh boy, this will be fun. There, there can't be any rock in Russia. This is going to be a joke. Wait till they see me. And to the outsider, there wasn't real rock and roll in Russia. Everything had to go through the state or be approved by censors and the KGB. But rockers made it happen anyway. In cramped communal apartments, in abandoned buildings, on rooftops, there was an underground movement out of sight of the Kremlin and the KGB. They didn't like the way rock looked. I think they didn't like the way that it riled up the audience. I, I think they thought, like a lot of people did, that rock and roll led to rebellion and, and 